Ladies and gentlemen, it is April. You know what that means? It is two months until June. And June is typically when all the news, like the big news in the world of gaming tends to drop and a whole bunch of different companies and studios showcase their games. But you know what that means? In the two month lead up to that time, it's kind of like the two month lead up until Christmas. There's going to be sort of a drought of, uh, you know how there's sort of like a drought in gift giving and stuff like that before Christmas and then it all just drops on that one day. Well, it's the same thing in terms of gaming news. That's not to say there won't be a little bit of gaming news between now and then, but it's going to be uh, not in that great a supply. That said, we do have some gaming news today for Maximum News, this edition of Maximum News. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit, it's going to be a shorter episode as a result. But the stuff that we do have to talk about today is pretty, pretty interesting. And of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't start off with this. Side, war, it never changes, right? I got to ask, first question, the Fallout TV show just dropped like an hour and mm-hmm. a half ago at the time that we're recording this. First thing yep. I want to know before I want to know your overall thoughts is, does it start with that monologue? Uh, no, actually, it doesn't. Oh, for <clears throat> real? Yeah, I was... Zero would, out of um, ten, I don't want to watch it anymore. Good night, everybody. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was a little surprised by the fact that they weren't uh doing that. Um it's not that it's it's a bad thing. It's that it's a really iconic thing and I know they're trying to move in a slightly different direction than the games, but there's some stuff that's just very cohesive. And I do wonder if, now I will forgive this if at the end of the series, which I haven't gotten to, I've only been able to watch the first episode, but at the end of the video, then they use the line. Then that would make sense. Like it's, then it's kind of like a full circle kind of thing, Mm -hmm. which happens like it's, it's a, that's a common trope that you can do to like sidestep what people anticipate and then introduce something later on. So first first thing I'll mention is we're not going to do spoilers. There's no spoilers yes, here. We're going to be talking about the look, the feel, um, um, general uh, concerns that people had going into the show. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and then my my sort of like my emotional reaction to the first episode as far as it, it, as it works within the confines of of a um of a fan viewing something that that's been a well, super long part of my life. Yeah. And just a few Did more- you know I have played every single every single Fallout game ever created, hmm. including two of them that never got released. Oh, <laughs> what well, uh I guess you probably can't say what which ones those are. But one uh, was the original Fallout 3 which was an isometric 3D game. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And then the other one was the uh was the Fallout MMO mm. uh, that was being worked on. Yeah, that got thrown. Uh, that got canceled and there was a big hubbub about that. So, yeah. yeah. I've I've played all of them myself, but I am like Fallout is sort of Sibe's lifeblood. It's something that I'm more so getting into in the recent past. I'm I'm kind of regretting that I didn't get into it sooner it's an absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant game series um i i've just always been more of an elder scrolls guy and then finally just before we get to your thoughts side um i have not seen the first episode i will i'm hoping to watch it tomorrow and then go through all of it before we talk again next week which i'm pretty sure hopefully next week Sib and i will have seen the entire series mm-hmm. um and yeah Sib has only watched the first episode because like i said just a second ago it's the series has only been available for the public for the last hour and a half so he's just yeah. he just finished watching it, and yeah, that's all you need to know. Side, go. So thematically and visually, and like things that happen within the the show so far, are consistent, very consistent with the um, the overall feel that the previous that that the games prior to Fallout Three's release were it falls of course more distinctively in with the feel of fallout 3 okay um with a touch of fallout 4ish because in the timeline it's closer to um post events of fallout 4 than it is with the um with the events in fallout 3 oh. uh so um there's some there's some lore updates like uh, certain faction updates, certain factional updates, certain things that have been happening within the world that are um, that are consistent with the history that we have so far on the games, 
coming up to this point and and, and up to the point where they, they've kind of covered them. So things seem to be like correcting for the most part. Now it's not perfect because there is some, some inconsistencies with Fallout 1 and 2 that we're going to run into due to just the fact that they're reorientating the world slightly and that that might have some that might have some people who are like super nerd or lore buffs kind of like going oh i don't i don't like that um the world is far more consistent with the with the fallout 3 perspective than it is with the original first couple of games so so but it is visually it's beautiful and it's also very interesting in how the vaults were all the vaults that we saw pre-release that were being talked about uh vault 31 vault 32 vault 33 um people were were confused on this stuff now that i've seen the first episode it makes sense i won't explain how but it just it makes sense now as soon as you see the first like 20 minutes you go oh okay i get this now all of the pre-images that we had seen, all of the um, the sneak peek kind of stuff that the official stuff that had been put out, people were really curious as to wait, why are we seeing all these different number of vaults? Now it totally makes sense. So that that was an issue that some people were like, I don't think they know what they're doing because it's it seems all over the place. But mm -hmm. it's not. Once you see it, you'll understand and you'll go, oh, okay. It's not. It's not. And it immediately invalidates a whole bunch of the. Um, the worried hype that people had around some of the lore stuff mm, that good. were anticipating some negativity um, in that perspective. Uh, so yeah, I think I think overall it, it's it's going in a better direction now. Now before um, you continue, just out of curiosity, I did when you just said that it takes place after Fallout Four. Uh, for some reason, I was under the impression that it took place like shortly after the Great War, but uh, I don't. I guess. I don't even know where I got that notion, but just out of curiosity, does it say approximately like what year or around what year it takes place? Like how long after Fallout 4 it was? Um, if I can do the calculations here. Because I'm just wondering, because I know it like I, I'm pretty sure that the show takes place in California, right? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I want to know to if there's going to be any references to stuff that happened in Fallout New Vegas, or if there's going to be like any it, continuity it, with that. There, there should be. I haven't seen any of that. The, what I saw was just it was sort of the setup of the main characters of the show. Okay. Um, yeah, they had. Sense. Yeah, they had kind of blockers saying this is so and so story, this is so and so story, this is so and so story, and so that you you have kind of the setup for the all the characters involved. Now, um, the pacing so far feels kind of rushed. Uh, I I kind of think I kind of would hope in, in my perfect world the first the first episode should have been broken into like probably six previous episodes mm. that followed one after the other, after the other, after the other, um, kind of doing a, 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 you know, story about number character number one in the first episode, then character number two in the second episode, then character number three in the third episode, and then repeating that again, closing out those loops and having um, that story really set as it is an hour and 15 ish minutes to cover the first three character stories. Okay. Um, Starting from, and you are right, from just prior to the the start of the Great War, to um, and I I might my my years might be off on this. I was jotting down notes as we were kind of going, so I didn't. I I might be wrong on this, but I believe the the current in story year for them is currently uh 2294 okay so that i might be been, off by a year or two okay though. so that would have been six or seven years after the events of fallout 4 yeah 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 so it, it it is it is really progressing quite further uh into the story so yeah um and again i don't mind that i think it's fine uh it's like i want them to move forward with the story i feel that anything that happens like kind of like Previous to that, in areas should be reserved for, uh, what's the word, um, like, 
uh, vignettes, essentially. So if you're going to go back and cover, like, you know, Harold's adventure as he crosses from the West Coast to the East Coast. Yeah. It's like that that can definitely happen in the future via game or more media. Um, and that's fine because it's sort of like it's sort of like encapsulated. So I'm hoping that they kind of st- stick with that kind of stuff moving forward. But uh, the show first and foremost has to be a success. So yeah. oh, fingers crossed that it'll be a success. Well, um, from what I understand, the show as a whole, based on all the reviews that have been coming out today, are pretty stellar. Mm-hmm. People are putting it up like right next to The Last of Us in terms of yeah. adaptations, in terms of its quality, which is yeah, saying something. Far- as far as the first episode goes, I 100% agree. I think this is I think this is actually uh better than The Last of Us oh. uh as far as like what I've seen so far. Uh there's been um there has been some introductions of certain staple things within you the universe. Character gets a serious injury. One of the characters gets a serious injury and they mend that injury with a stim pack, which nice does substantially more healing than anything else out there. So there will be some people who go, my goodness, that character was stabbed. How could they just be walking around? Well, that's actually an in-game thing. The stim packs are, the science in the stim packs goes that it it heals up the body's own regenerative healing by factors of several hundred so they for a short brain. period of time. So mm-hmm. they're not... They're not quite like Wolverine, but it 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 will mend very serious injuries and allow you to like get back into the action quite quickly. Wow. Um, some people, and this this is going to be a thing that we've we've seen it argued a lot so far um, by by people who are kind of dreading this and kind of like going, oh, don't don't like this show because it's gonna have a it's gonna have a um, uh, uh, oh yeah, the diverse cast, right? Well, th- that and the uh, what's what's it called when a character is super overpowered for no oh, reason? Oh, the Mary Sue thing. Uh, the Mary Sue, right? So there's going to be the Mary Sue and the 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 super diversity cast. It's like so far, um, I would say if you picked out uh, out of the six main characters that really stood out to me at the beginning of the show. In the first episode, if you picked out six random people from America, you probably get pretty close to the those six main characters. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to sort of say that for the time being, for the moment, uh, there was there was no um, there was nothing that seemed ham fisted because I'm not against diversity. Yeah. I'm against forced diversity when it doesn't make sense for the plot and the story. You know, like changing characters because you don't like redheads, Hollywood, for some reason. <laughs> really bizarre, well, must it would, say. It would be sh- really, really strange if they were to do something like that for mm-hmm. a series like Fallout. Because Fallout is all about the flaws of mankind and seeing mm-hmm. if it's even possible to overcome them or try to reinstitute a sense of humanity or civilization post-apocalypse. And based on everything that I've seen from the trailers... Uh, like you got the chick from the vault, you got the guy in the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, both are from worlds that are filled with flawed individuals, and in mm-hmm. turn, they are sort of uh, products of their environment. But then they yeah. try to become better people. So it would be strange if they were just overpowered like that off the bat. So, yeah, like, like people forget that the Brotherhood of Steel are fanatical, yeah. um, Re- like bullies, religious zealots. Yeah. Yeah, quasi religious, definitely bullies though. Like they, they, they are not there to like. There, there are a sect of them and a, and a slice of them that are those noble. You know, the the concept of the noble knight riding in to save the peasants from the dragon. That that is definitely something that has been a, a consistent um, uh, thing within the story within the universe. There's some some fallout. Of, uh, Sorry, some Brotherhood of Steel uh, members are are very very noble, whereas others are extremely political. Others are extraordinarily um, uh, emotionally 
attached to their fanaticism of of the hero worship that they do. Uh, so that those kinds of issues are there. They're meant to like create a story, and I, I deal with this a lot as a writer, and and I have concerns with it in when it comes to like people in uh, everyday society that I hear about, where there's some people who are like, you can't write a story about certain characters doing certain things that we would you know say oh you can't do that anymore even though sometimes that logic is kind of flawed and we'll talk about that actually in the BAFTA award thing that mm -hmm. we're going to talk about in a, in a couple minutes but but overall you have to have characters that are capable of doing bad things and then like you know learning from that and growing you know, forward because like without that, you, you you don't have interesting story. You have Saturday morning cartoon villains and characters where it's like there's no never any depth. The the characters never grow. They're the same character that they are in um, that one. I talk about the show every once in a while. It's like this. It's the uh, the guy that sounds like Elvis with the blonde hair, and and the story just repeats itself. It's it's a loop. The story is a loop. Okay. The the first episode leads, you know, to two, three, four, goes all the way around to the last episode, which then the last episode feeds into the first episode. So they're stuck in this, like, permanent time loop where they're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And it's insane to think that that's good story writing for adults. It's very entertaining for children, sure. and it has its place in certain, certain other places, but... Fallout has to be gritty, it has to be crude, it has to be, you know, you have to see the the errors of humanity because that's the whole point of the show. Yeah. That's the whole point of the lore. The story is to show damaged individuals. And I think that some of the stories that were told in um, New Vegas are still some of the best story writing I have ever seen. Um, Joshua Graham, baby. Joshua Graham, but not just that. Uh, did you oh, ever? Yeah. Did, Father Elijah, did you ever? Randall Clark, Ulysses, yeah, yeah uh, and even the people in the main did, game. Yeah. Did you ever in in New Vegas? Did you ever encounter the sniper who was having um, emotional issues due to trauma? It, that's not Randall Clark, right? It's a different. No, guy. it's a, it's a female. It's a female sniper. She's no. with New California Republic. She's a side character that you can like kind of get in uh, um, oh. in with. And she was um, captured and suffered horrible, horrible things at the hands of the uh, the fiends. And then she turned her, when she got freed, she turned her anger in on them, but then also started to, like, emulate the same negative things that she suffered when dealing with the fiends. And there's a, a, a one of the, one of her fellow soldiers is kind of like, is like, hey, this character, this person's kind of going off the rails, like, you know, she's going to end up destroying herself if, if right. we can't get her back onto the, the, you know, back to normalcy. And that's a part of the mission in New Vegas is to help this, this character get closure on the bad things that she happened, that she, she experienced because of this stuff going, uh, because otherwise she's just going to end up becoming the monster that she hated. Right. And that is so like, that is such good, deep, important storytelling and you really do miss that yeah. so what about what about in the show was there this setup of what we have in modern hollywood which is the um the girl boss don't need no man the uh the concept of like oh the the you know all the everything is the fault of you know so, you know the, the typically the white guys and so therefore you know is that any of that kind of stuff? And I got to say, after watching the first episode, I, I, I can say no, um, definitely not. And the while the main, while the female character is quite strong, uh, there's a reason for that, which is that if you spent your entire life inside basically an enclosed off military base with absolutely nothing to do other than screw around with your cousins because you're related to everybody in the vault or study and learn everything that's available to you, which is mostly everything that, that human history has to offer, yeah. you're going to have, in that scenario, you're going to have people who are incredibly gifted, which is a core part of the character building that happens in Fallout, uh, in the original Fallout game, in Fallout 1, 
Um, and two, you had gifted traits and you had all of the traits that allowed for characters to be hyper specialized, super geniuses, that kind of stuff. Um, but it always came at a bit of a cost in, in another direction. And I got to say that I think so far the, the fight scenes don't showcase anybody being a super powered Mary Sue that what you see is, is proper combat dynamics, which I really do enjoy. What's a proper combat dynamic? It's like, well, size and strength have a considerable edge in, in melee combat. But as soon as you enter a, um, a, any kind of a, a, uh, power balance in the form of guns, you know, that, that, you know, <laughs> suddenly yeah. size, size and, and, and strength don't matter when your opponent has a gun and you don't, you know, so that, that kind of stuff, that kind of mentality, that mechanics in, in the combat was present and it was done in the way that I was hoping that it was done. Good. Again, this is only the first episode yeah. and we have certainly seen how shows can go sideways very quickly. Yeah. There are a lot but, of shows with a great first episode and that it goes downhill from there. Yes. Yes. So I will say that as of right now, I think overall the show is spectacular. Yay. It is not, is not perfect, but my perfect fallout show is different than what I think the vast majority of everybody else's perfect fallout show would be. So obviously I'm going to say that I can't expect that to happen here right. because you know, that would be kind of insane to do that. But no, for the most part, I'm really enjoying the feel of where it is currently headed. And I'm really enjoying how the game looks, feels, and is coming across. And I think that this is a good thing. And I'm hoping that moving forward, we will continue to have even better um, better progression in it. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. I got my fingers crossed right now. Um, uh, I did appreciate a couple things. So I was for, for a very long time in my life, uh, and I was actually quite good at it. I was an avid fencer and they mentioned fencing and that is where some of the characters get there in the vault. That's where some of the characters get their combat experience from is through fencing. And I think that, um, anytime you're doing any kind of a physical combat thing, like that's super, super, really healthy, very important. Ash is a big fan of this. Uh, he himself has, has gone through a lot of um, uh, martial arts training over the last few years mm. as a way of like staying healthy and keeping his mind focused. And he absolutely loves it. And it was present in the show. And I think that that kind of like sets that up as a potential. But not all of the characters in the vault were blessed like that. Some of them were people who played games on their, their pit boy nonstop and didn't do anything else. They, and they, they, uh, they did not have a good time in when, when push came to shove. So there, there is of course stuff like that where it's balanced out. And I think that that totally makes sense because in a vault of like a couple thousand people, yeah, you're going to have like one or two stand up people. And in canonically in the fallout series, those are the people who are chosen to go outside and brave the dangers of the of the wilderness to um, to save their father from hell, which is a which is one of the core human stories oh, yeah. It's of yeah, it's Pinocchio, it's it's um, it's Osiris, it's all of these stories stretching back in some cases millennia upon millennia, and so the, that that's an archetypal story when you see that you know, it's, it's something that's actually, they kind of proved that it's actually part of our DNA. It's actually, it's actually driven into our core DNA experience because of all of the, the cool stuff that humanity has gone through for the last like couple, 10,000 years or so. So yeah, it's, um, it, it, I'm really liking it. I don't see any of the, the issues. The biggest issue was, oh, it's just gotta be a Barry Sue. It's like, nah, um, she is sort of the, more or less the main character, but the story does not start or end in the first episode exclusively on her in any way, shape or form. Uh, she doesn't even come into the picture until quite later on. And then um, the last portion of the, uh, the, that episode doesn't have her in, in the framing at all. So it's like, for the most part, we're not seeing that whole Mary Sue thing that people were screaming about and getting all like upset about. It's like, we didn't see that at all. So, yeah. and, and, and again, I, I mentioned that 
because, and we could debate and talk about the, the, like, how does Mary Sue's actually work? Are they actually a problem? How do they function and all this stuff? Like we could talk about that forever. Um, and there are, I have very strong feelings on like the roles of, of Mary Sue's, how Mary Sue's will often, um, get criticism where the same characteristics in a, in a, in a male character present don't and that, that kind of stuff. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not being like, I'm not trying to like, I'm not, uh, what's the term like politically motivated at all. I'm just, yeah. I'm just covering this from a, a creative yeah. narrative is from a storyteller's perspective. So. Yeah. Fair enough, dude. Well, yeah. that makes me very happy, especially the fact that you're comparing it to something like the first episode of the last of us, which I, I, as far as I'm concerned is perfect television. Like uh, the nine episodes that we saw from the last of us TV show, the first one is my favorite and I consider that perfect television. So now you've got my hopes up pretty high, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I get to be disappointed uh, based on everything that you've just said and everything I've been reading online. I'm looking to be in for something really, really special when I hopefully sit down and watch it tomorrow. All right, guys, question is for you. Have you watched any of the Fallout show yet? Are you liking it? Are you digging it? Are you a Fallout fan? Uh, does it is it in line with sort of what you were expecting for a Fallout TV show? Is it not? We'd love to hear your thoughts down below. All right, let's move on to this, shall we? Uh, BAFTA side. Uh, British Academy of Film and Television Arts. They yeah. apparently have a video game division that I didn't know about. And apparently yep. they've actually had a, a, a series of awards handed out to games for the past 20 years. Um, I don't know why, but I guess, you know, you do play video games on your television. So I guess that kind of fits. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But anyways, there was this uh, article that had been making the rounds on Twitter. And I saw it like every single day this past week to the point that it was driving me nuts. And mm -hmm. I, I tend to understand why. So people, they, the people over at BAFTA in advance of the 20th annual show that they do uh, their game awards, they put out a poll that went out to 4,000 people all across the world to try to determine what are the most iconic video game characters ever. And they came back with a list of 20. Now, the people that they put on this list, largely, the, the majority of them, I agree, should be on there. My problem is... I with, don't. Well, I mean, I, I do. <laughs> but my problem is with the ordering of them and mm -hmm. the fact that there were like three or four on there that shouldn't be on there and three or four that absolutely should be on there that for whatever reason aren't. I'm going to go through a few of mine and then I'm going to hand it off to Side so that he can probably I, I'm sensing an even bigger rant than me. But uh, I think he and I share pretty com like c common ground on at least this and this is sort of the main thing that people were uh i think rightly bitching about online the number one spot was taken by lara croft tomb raider in my opinion def she's definitely in the top 20 most iconic yes. characters possibly the top 10 and i don't think she belongs in the top five but i'm i think there's a reasonable argument that she could be I, I do. I think I think she's number four. Right. But yeah. she's not number one. No. No. That goes... Mar the, the number one Mary. most iconic yes. character in the history of gaming side is Mario. Hands down. No questions asked. That is an objective fact. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like saying... Neil Peart is not the greatest rock drummer that ever... Well, I'm, that's a little bit more subjective. I'm, but I'm being facetious, but I'm trying to get across a point. Obviously, it's Mario. The, the, there's just no other choice, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Do you have anything you want to say about that before I go down my list? Um, no, you're hundred percent right. Mario is number one. Yeah. Um, this isn't a sexist thing. This is just a numbers wise thing. So like, oh, of yeah. course, yeah. It's just it, Mario has said the greatest. It has sold the greatest number of copies. Has the biggest franchise. Is the most universally recognized. There are starving mm -hmm. kids in Africa. You show them a picture of Mario, and they know who Mario is. Yeah, seriously. And I bet you dollars to donuts that the vast majority of those kids in Africa don't know who the hell Lara Croft is. All right. Yeah. Moving on. Agent Forty Seven at number three. 
At number three, whoever wrote this is an absolute idiot. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but you have no idea how to do your job. Right. Agent 47 is one of Ash's most favorite characters in video gaming. Yeah, he's like, huh, and but even, not even three. he. Even he would say, no, this, Agent 47 is nowhere near top 10, period. He is probably about 18, 19. Yeah. Because it is an incredibly niche genre that has taken large, gigantic gaps in releases. And that you like that is a thing. And that's one of the things that Laura Croft um, has an issue with. A, she's not a first gen gaming character. She's a, a much like later than first gen um, but yeah, no, this is, this is, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm just, I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing this beforehand, but I'm going to try and see if I can figure out how many copies the entire Hitman series has sold, but I can guarantee to you that it pales in comparison to the characters and their games like Sonic, the Hedgehog. I know that is well mm -hmm. over a hundred million copies and I'm willing to bet my entire house that Hitman, the series, has not sold over 100 million copies. Thank you very much. Same with, especially with Pikachu, who, god damn it, why do I not have this list up in front of me? I mm -hmm. Do you know what, Pikachu was on the list, but... Number 12. Number 12? And you're saying Agent 47 is nine spots higher than Pikachu? <laughs> yeah, okay. like I said, the, the, whoever is doing this list was, I feel, that whoever did this list was doing this list... To get praises by the corporations in which the they own the characters of these characters in the game. Right. Okay. Um, and there will be a couple other ones I have to say. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, I, I feel like you're going to have something to say about the inclusion of Asterion and Shadowheart. So I'm just going to put that to the side for a second. I, I'm just going to finish by naming the ones that... A, a few of the ones that probably should have been on the list but weren't. Samus Aran. She's mm -hmm. way more iconic than Agent 47 is. Yep. Certainly more iconic than Sackboy, who is at number five. Yeah, Sackboy, I, I had to like look at that for a long time and think, who the hell is this? <laughs> I don't know this this thing. And I'm in this space. Like, okay, right, right. oh, I get it. It's, it's a it's a it's part of a genre that I don't really follow. But still absolutely absolutely not. Absolutely right. not. There are a hundred characters that are more recognizable than Sack Boy. Right. Like, even <laughs> Sarge from the Halo series has more recognizability than Sack Boy does. What a dumb concept. Mad preaching the gospel. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, Donkey Kong. Okay, look, if you could put two characters from Baldur's Gate 3 onto this list, you can definitely guarantee Find a spot. that Donkey Kong... It belongs in there somewhere. Gordon Freeman, mm -hmm. it, okay, maybe not the man himself, but when he's holding the crowbar, that crowbar is more like one of the most iconic weapons in the history of gaming. It and it is true. And I know I'm Gordon gonna, Freeman. Yeah, and I, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna piss off a lot of people here, but I don't actually think that Gordon Freeman deserves to be on the list. Okay. Um, and I'll give you the two quick reasons for that. One, um, not used as a narrative tool. So, like, it, I could accept this if we had a uh, a number three or a number four or a number five or a number six, then that would make way more sense and be far more accurate. But, um, like, I, I don't think that he did deserve to be on the list because he's not as iconic as a central narrative arc the the um the suitcase man probably would i would put him at a higher position because in you don't you don't really see gordon that much when you're playing the game mm -hmm. but that character most people can recognize that character in a heartbeat uh because he's a very he has a very iconic look that's part of the thing it's also why my my first initial thought was like no number one spot shouldn't be Mario, it should be the pixel, right? Like just the the pixel, the square pixel, dating all the way back to the first adventure games. The uh, the of course Pong, 
right? Yeah. Because the pixel, that would make sense. But it's also kind of a stupid uh, thing to say because it's it's clearly like, yes, all games use pixels. Obviously, that's very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Um, and, and that would sort of be kind of like a gotcha if you were doing a top 20 starting at the bottom going up. And then, you know, you surprise everybody by, our number one is the pixel, because without them, <laughs> none of these characters would be here. Ha, 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 ha. Our number one Very is funny. the uh, the Z-shaped block from Tetris. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But right. you know what? In response to, like, you know what? You, you make a good point about Gordon Freeman. Mm-hmm. I, I would say he does play a, an important narrative role, but I will concede that it's not very obvious to people that yeah. sort of just play Half Life from a surface point of view. So fair enough. Um, yeah. Doom guy from Doom, um, Duke Nukem, and uh, Pyramid Head, I think, <clears throat> should be in the conversation. Yeah. Um, and then there are three other ones which I think should be in the conversation, but I don't think would make it on there. One's Dante from Devil May Cry. Mm-hmm. The other one's Captain Price from Call of Duty, who, like, I don't care if he ends up on the list. I'm not a Call of Duty fan, but, you know, it's Call of Duty. And uh, Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, um, which I think you would agree with. Anyway, so those are uh, sort mm-hmm. of my main points. I do have a few others, but I do want to pass it off to Saib so he can say his piece. What do you think, man? So um, definitely Commander Sh- Shepard, both male and female, I think they should tie for probably like, I don't know, like probably top 10, somewhere around the 8, 9 seven spot maybe Mm -hmm. because it is the first game that was this just this gorgeous um story that involved this grand space opera that you got to play whoever you wanted your shepherd to be and again i i really do hate this and we'll talk about this in the next story where games force you especially today the fact that I'm given games that have a don't have a character creator is absolutely mental to me. The the complaint was always, oh well, we don't have time or blah blah blah. It's like no 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 no. If you, unless you're making a a des- designated narrative arc for the primary story character that involves and requires you to have this one singular character in it, um, you are making a mistake. And I and I absolutely love the way that that uh, that uh, Larian approached this by having you not only be able to play as your own character, but actually being able to play as Shadowheart or as you know any of the other Asterian and, and the other characters. Gale is, is yeah. you know playing as Gale through a playthrough is hilarious. Um, it's really fun. I th- I think it's he's more fun to be a companion with because his his snooty kind of attitude is just always so great to hear um but yeah the there's the fact that there's not a a player generated character archetype and mass effect would have been the perfect the perfect option for it um if not the original character from uh, uh dragon age origins where you again you chose and created your own character and it could have been anything from a human to an elf to a dwarf to you know and so many options available and i really i really do wish that they had stuck with that like i really do wish that they had stuck with that through two and three and just like really focus down on it and I, and i hope that we'll have those choices moving forward and i hope that the next mass effect game gives us the opportunity to play as a as as a different alien like yeah. I, I think i think that that would be actually really important but the narrative writing tends to get stuck in this stuff yeah. and then you have this minutia of like like oh well we can't do this because we can't create story that encompasses all this stuff of course you can of course you can you take you take a whole bunch of kids from a whole bunch of different races and you put them all in some kind of like you know, uh, a survival situation where they, they all grew up together, you know, suddenly you have a, you have a unified baseline to with which to write the expanding of all of the potential characters that the player could pick. Boom, done. It's like, it's, this isn't hard. I, I know I'm not a new writer. I haven't put out my official book series yet, but I am a published author. And I got to say that the laziness that I see in some writing is just yeah. phenomenally weak. Fair it, enough. It, it's but, phenomenally weak. But back to the list. So. Yeah, so um, 
Yeah, uh, Mario should be Mario's number one. Agent Forty Seven is not on this list, or if he if he is, he's at the very bottom of the list. Yeah, uh, Sackboy is definitely not on this list. Sonic the Hedgehog gets a, a bit of a minus because again, it's a character who super important to me growing up as a character as a kid playing video games, watching the cartoon. I loved this. I loved it hundred percent. I think it's actually one of the best. Like, um game to tv series things that ever happened and, mean, I, and i really you mean a movie or no no the tv series. yeah i'm sorry yep yeah, yeah i yeah. gotcha it's a car- cartoon series yeah. was just absolutely brilliant way back like this is this was way way long time ago um this was like in the 90s that that came out and it was really good it was it was amazing pac-man deserves to be higher he's probably yes. top five uh i would probably maybe even put him as like two but I think Link is a little bit better because we don't have many. And the fact that he's number six right now and Link is number seven is kind of stupid because Pac-Man is only in one game and we don't even have like newer versions of that game. So it's sort of this this retro thing from the past that really didn't have, like had a really good sticking point initially, but definitely does not have a continued place in the annals of like, top most you know iconic game characters today it's like mm. that's not he's, he wouldn't be in the list for today he would be in a list uh, if you were making the top 30 probably but not not top 10 or 20 it's it, maybe Pac-Man's most in, that maybe important. most important characters maybe not iconic yeah but yeah sure. I, I understand your argument yeah so then and link of course like link like Zelda 1, 2, 3, 4, these were masterful games, and then you get into the new 3D worlds, and it's even better. So, and, and I'll say that Link definitely deserves to be higher up. Master Chief definitely be- deserves to be on the list. Kratos deserves to be on the list. Um, Shadow Heart, I disagree. She does belong on the list, because, and and not high up, but she got number 10 on this list, and that, that's too high. But right now, um, Shadow Heart art is everywhere online, yeah. like in places that you would never expect to see it. Like in my music playlists, for some reason, I see just amazing, um, just amazing, beautiful Shadow Hearts everywhere. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, she's really, I think she's got some sticking power and I hope that, that, that she'll kind of continue in some way i hope all the characters from polder's gate 3 continue yeah. in some way but but yeah um arthur morgan in in red dead redemption 2 no no great character but maybe no it's a it's a great character but it's a it's a it's essentially a one-off like it's it's not a it's not a genre defining main character there's hundreds of other characters again the fact that arthur morgan is on this list and not shepherd or anybody from the mass effect yeah, franchise yeah. is is ridiculous because those had three games to red dead redemption 2 he's the main protagonist in 2 but he's not he's not really from the other games now if you wanted to say like Western characters such as Martha, Arthur Morgan, then you probably have a little bit more success with that. But it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't jive. Yeah. Um, Pikachu obviously deserves to be a little bit higher. Um, Crash Bandicoot is pretty synonymous, but I, I think his placement is sort of okay. He's definitely a sub fifteen. Yeah, he's, he's fifteen on this. Roughly, yeah. Yeah, I would say Cloud probably deserved to be above him because again. Um, he's been around for so long, both visually and as part of like storytelling and stuff like that. Crash, definitely not up that high. <laughs> definitely not on the. Definitely not above Cloud from Final Fantasy. Just no. It's <laughs> there. They are both, and Crash is a great character. I'm not saying that any of these characters are innately bad, except for um, except for Sackboy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Except right. for Sackboy. Sackboy does not deserve this list. He doesn't deserve even the top 100. Like. GTFO, this is dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, absolutely not. With like no. But Crash Bandicoot, yeah, he's top he's top 30 for sure. But he's not he's the this is where this is where at the bare minimum Donkey Kong should have been. Yes, yes. Because again, Donkey Kong was there in the beginning. He hasn't had any recent great games, but Crash Bandicoot was again, it's one of these sort of like 
limited characters that we haven't seen that much of. Yeah, he had three um, great games back on yeah. the P- Well, no, four if you count Crash Team Racing. Um, yeah. And then only recently when Crash 4 came out that they sort of made a game that was yeah. at that level. Yeah. And then Ellie from Last of Us, 100% yeah, she be. absolutely no. Yes. Absolutely, no, she should be not above not above Nathan Drake. Um, and again, it's it's just down to a numbers game. Nathan Drake spawned an entire series, and is a very beloved mainstream character that has been around for, uh, like for a really long time mm-hmm. in gaming. Um, that he has been there since before the Last of Us series. Yeah. So again, when you have a uh, you know, when you have multiple franchise. Like we're talking three plus games versus a standalone character in one game. There's no way that 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 central main character in the game. It's just a numbers thing. It's just a a, a bin that now Ellie. I think probably my official list. It should probably be like 22 or 23. So mm-hmm. not. I'm not saying far off of where she is. She's number 19 in this list, and I think she's about five spots too high. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not. It's 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 a good character, and these lists I would always like. I would always have them be like I would formulate them probably top fifty or top twenty five at the very minimum. Mm-hmm. So she would still end up visually on the list somewhere, but over her I would have Bayonetta for sure because yeah, Bayonetta well... and and Metroid the Metroid main character Samus um, yeah absolutely yeah. Samus 100% like way way more like Samus 100% deserves to be on this list and that just that because there's so many characters that are missing from this list this does push some of these characters down further I do believe Asterion deserves to be on the list but not at 17 I think he's more of a a 25ish that's not to say that um the character performance was worse than than uh, Shadowheart. Shadowheart and his performance were oh, I, on par. They were yeah. 100% like they were genius. Um, it's just that people can laugh at Asterion a lot more and laughter is what brings people together more. Um, generally speaking, comedies are, I feel, are have a more longer effect on people than than kind of like a romancy, like hearty kind of character. But I mean, Shadowheart said some great comedy lines too. So, yeah. But the delivery for the various lines that they were doing, I think obviously Asterion, he, he, the, the, and his act, voice actor, he, he deserved the wins that he got for best actor because the stuff that he did was absolute gold. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, this is just a reminder that, uh, these people, have no idea what is with gaming because they forgot so many core characters in gaming. Again, Samus has not always had great games. Um, the the mother uh, was it next mother or mother next or whatever that one was. That was a terrible one, absolutely yeah. garbage. The writing in that was trash. You mean other but M? over other M other yeah, M? Yeah, 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 that's the one. That was the that was her darkest moment in the sense of like. A writer who did not know how to handle a character, did not know how to write in general, and who did like, hey, what's the top 20 tropes that I can do? Okay, this is now my centralized plot for the entire story that I'm doing, is just going from one stupid bad trope to the next stupid bad trope, and not the good tropes. Like, there's good tropes that are like, ha ha, yes, the Sundare, oh, we love the Sundare, oh, she's so funny, oh, yes, of course, to the cleverly written other other tropes that get into games. Um, Other M was a disaster in all of these things, and I think it is one of the worst games to ever go down because it was sure. so disrespectful to the character. Yeah. But but Samus as a character survives past that and is one of the most important key characters in the history of gaming. And the fact that she's not even on this list, whereas you have Ellie from The Last of Us, it's like again, it's it's like yes, if you're 14 years old that probably makes more sense to you right. but if you've been around since the the advent of gaming um no it's 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 like it's a flash in the pan yeah right i tend to agree and, with you yeah samus and donkey kong yeah. are the biggest emissions absolutely yeah 100 percent. so yeah, you nailed that honestly Cybe, i i think 
for the majority of it, we share general agreement. The only thing that I think I significantly disagree with you on is the inclusion of the Baldur's Gate characters. Not because they're bad or anything, but it's just because it's too soon. But maybe mm-hmm. in like three or four years, I think, yeah, absolutely, they would surpass characters like Ellie, Nathan Drake, maybe. Yeah, and definitely carry you. But yeah, anyways, those are our thoughts. Sorry, we got we to gotta move on because we have a couple more things. Mm-hmm. We're almost at the hour mark. But yeah, any thoughts on this uh, list, guys? We'd really love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we also like to hear you equally laugh along with uh, and mock this list for the lack of Samus. All right, moving on to this. Star Wars Outlaws. It's a game that I'm kind of curious about because mm-hmm. just th- there has to come a point where the promise of an open world Star Wars game actually meets its full potential. And yeah. I don't think Star Wars Outlaws is going to be it, but I'm keeping my eye on it just because eventually it's got to happen. And this is sort of the closest that maybe we're going to get to that dream. But uh, the thing is, just like with a lot of people, when it comes to a lot of Ubisoft games, the way they market it and the way they present it is generally good. But the sticking point for a lot of people is when they pick up the game and they go through the gameplay loop. How similar is it to the common Ubisoft formula? Now, some people love the Ubisoft formula. Some people are kind of tired of it. Some people are indifferent to it. Um, yeah. I, I haven't played an Ubisoft game in about 10 or 15 years, say for Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, like, I haven't played Assassin's Creed. I haven't played the Far Cry games for a while. And yeah, so but I, I know enough, like, based on what people have been saying online, that they sort of want more innovation. And I'm curious to see whether or not Star Wars Outlaws is going to provide that. Well, we got our latest look at it this past week when they released a uh, story trailer for it. We also got a release date. It's coming out August 30th. So that's good. Um, I'll probably just be spending... Uh, that week going on my third or fourth playthrough of Black Myth Wukong, but that's just me. Um, the trailer on its own side, it's like, it, it's fine. It's it's a 7 out of 10. It's got cool looking environments. Uh, the vehicular travel, like on that bike that she's on, going across the water and stuff, and when she gets attacked by the big sandworm, that looks cool. But there's a there wasn't really anything stand, like besides that that was really stand out about it. Uh, like, I actually, there were a lot more things about it that were sort of making me wonder, huh? Like, there's a lot of, I, I wonder whether or not, huh, there is actually this one thing that uh, popped up at the very beginning of the trailer where it says all the images, not all the images shown in this trailer are going to appear in the actual game. I don't know if you caught that side, but that was there. And it's like, really? So how do I know how much it, like, you're showing me these cool environments that I would love to explore. Am I going to be able to explore them? I don't know. And then there's a couple of things like the the attempts at humor didn't really jive with me. And while the environments look really cool, the facial models for a lot of the characters look really off, especially for the main character, which is not good. Um, But yeah, like underlying my approach to this game is just the same as everybody else. What is this game going to do that is going to one, not only sort of go beyond sort of what we've come to expect from Ubisoft. But more importantly, is this the type of game that's going to reinvigorate love for, to to put it nicely, a struggling franchise? I don't know. And it hasn't really moved the meter on my anticipation or excitement. I want to see more from it. And that's sort of where I'm at with it right now. And that's really all I have to say. Uh, Yeah, like I said, slow news week. Saib, any thoughts on this? Yeah, um... (sighs) Is basically the same. I, I, w- I would love to talk about this for an hour, but we don't have the time. So uh, I will say that an open world game without a custom built character is, are you insane, sir? Are you, <laughs> are you, um, I'm trying not to get really aggressive and insulty here, but it is just the, the, again, Jedi Academy had the ability to create your own character amongst many different races. And that game is like, (sighs) what, almost two decades old now? Yeah, yeah. The the technology has gone backwards as far as gameplay goes, as far as options goes. And again, the question is why? And then just kind of mixing this in with the Stellar Blade drama that's been happening this week, um, this week, Both it feels Stellar like it's been Blade. going on for the past month. 
right? Stellar Blade had a character, the, the main character was scanned in with a high-resolution scan of an actual person. And she is beautiful and gorgeous, and the um, and all of these crazy, idiotic, moronic, selfish, indignant, disgusting people online going, oh, clearly whoever made this doesn't know what a woman really is. It's like, no, you're you're living in opulence and and uh, surrounded with like high fat foods that <laughs> are not healthy for you have yeah. have apparently warped just not only your body but your brain as well. Um, for them to then go, oh, this game looks amazing when she too was scanned in with an actual body scan, but you could notice something when you look at the character image and then the any picture that the actress posts, somebody went in there after the fact, after they had scanned her in and proceeded to make her look very much more uglier than the person who was scanned after. And this is not the first time this has happened in games. Oh yeah. Especially Western games where you start out scanning a person's body and I'm sorry, I find this the most sexist, oh, yeah. disgusting thing I can possibly imagine. Is it sexist and disgusting to have a, a, a scan of um, this, this gorgeous Korean model? No. What is sexist and disgusting is when a bunch of people get together, decide that the, the model that they scanned is not, somehow doesn't fit their, um, their, their worldview somehow, and they go in and they physically change proportions of her body and visibly change her face to alter her appearance. Like, I, I, I know I'm autistic and a little bit crazy at times, but I don't understand how this is not considered, like, just the, the, the wor some of the worst sins that you can do to another human being. Yeah. is like, you know what? I don't like the way you look. We're not going to get you into makeup. I'm going to scan you in, and then I'm going to artificially inflate and change the way that your body looks. It's like, and then we're going to represent you because that's you in the game. Because again, for those of you who don't know, the guy who plays the main character in the Jedi Survivor series, that's him. If you have a picture of him and his character and him in real life, and you put those two together, you can tell that is 100% actually him. Body proportions, everything. So why are they doing this to a woman? I really don't understand that. It's very disgusting, especially when all these people are the same people who go, oh, Stellar Blade shouldn't have a character who looks that pretty. That's that's absolutely unacceptable. It's like, then 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 either stop adding in a character's one, one uh, uh, using a model to one-to-one -one a character in a game and give us character sliders and options and, and the ability to add and ch change and tweak our main character between multiple different space alien species or STF you please on this on this topic because I I it's it's the one thing and I know it's sort of a niche thing because not many other people are talking about this but to me that just it smacks of a it smacks of control and this weird like power gamey thing that abusive people do to other people one of the biggest abuses I've ever seen is when somebody looks at somebody else and says, I don't like the way that you look. You should change the way that you look to meet my preferences. Yeah. It's like, it's like we, we all have a right to be in whatever bodies we want to be in. And we all have the right to, you know, try and better ourselves. But to do this to an actress that you've hired to play a Porsche or to play a role, like what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. Just let people like, make their art and, and, the way they want to. And if you don't like it, make your own art. Yeah, and and I mean, I am more upset about this than than the pricing, but the pricing in its oh, in and yeah, of itself, the pricing base game six seventy dollars. You want the gold edition hundred and ten dollars. You want the uh, ultimate edition hundred and thirty dollars. This is not worth a hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. I guarantee you, this game is not going to be worth a hundred and thirty dollars. This game, it it. I think this is going to be a bomb because of how t 
terrible it is. No it game is, is worth $130, period. <laughs> it is, it is, I, I just, I was, I'm floored. Unless it's called overall. Batman. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm floored overall, and I really, I really, I really dislike. I frankly, I really dislike this. I do not enjoy this whatsoever. Um, and, and I think, blah, gross. Yeah, probably not no. going to play it uh, unless I hear, like, everybody's giving it like a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. Yeah. I'll just. I, I was talking. I was talking with one of our community manager uh, community uh, folks, and um, and he he said that he is going to wait to see how the mods tweak the game oh, be because cool. he has no interest in playing the main base character as is. He wants different character. He wants the option to play as an alien. He wants a couple other options, and. I'm like, yeah, it really does depend on what they do for that. If they can give me a Twi'lek or if they can give me a, um, what's a dude with the red eyes and the blue skin? Oh, oh, um, from Star Wars? Yeah, from Star Wars. Oh, a Greedo? No, it's it's like Thrawn's species. I can't oh, remember what I, species I don't know, man. is. <laughs> but like that's cool. There's a whole bunch of other options that are cool. Um and again that the fact that they didn't add them in there and they'll probably be in there by by players. I don't know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, it's just yeah. honestly if I knew that this game was like, well, you could be a random outlaw, you can join any faction and then do missions for those factions and that would have been a more interesting game to me, but I don't know. Maybe yeah. Ubisoft will find a way to tell a story that makes that other idea not worthwhile. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this episode of Maximum News. Uh, we managed to actually go for a full hour, uh, even though I, I thought it was going to be like half that. But uh, it was a great discussion. Uh, thanks so much, Saib, for doing this with me. And thanks so much to everybody that's been listening. Make sure you hit the like button if you like this episode. Make sure you leave a comment if you have any thoughts on any of the stuff that Saib and I talked about. Love to hear from you, provided that you just, you know, provide your criticisms or praises in a civil way um yeah side thanks as always um before i ask you if you want to plug anything i'm just going to do ash a favor and plug his scenometry channel which asked me to do guys if you love futurama which uh i'd be shocked if there were people in here that didn't like futurama <laughs> um but, but go over and check out his channel. Uh, so I, uh, Ash, in regards to Futurama, is like me to Metal Gear Solid in terms of knowledge and being able to make entertaining stuff out of it. I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description box below. Seriously recommend go checking it out. And uh, Sai, yeah, anything else you want to plug? Um, I, have a, I have a new series coming out <gasps> where I talk with an AI. Oh yeah, oh, I can't. Where where I, where I don't just ask AI questions and then we read the questions out. No, no, no. There is a there is a generative empathic AI who has a voice and everything that you can just sit down and talk with. And we talked about video games for about half an hour, and I was impressed by the conversation. I I genuinely was impressed with how it felt. Um, and this is definitely a series that is going to be around. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to get around to f doing the second episode sometime soon. Uh, first episode should be out sometime very soon. So, right. If I, uh, if I ever test out that thing, the first thing I'm going to ask it is, okay, does cloud, should cloud end up with Tifa or Aerith? And if they say Aerith, then I'm just going to kill them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my litmus test for AI. That's my Turing test. And you, I'm just joking. I'm being facetious, guys. Chill. If you like Aerith and Cloud, whatever. And you guys can find me on all the regular forms of social media, just at Max Derrett. I will have a video out next week on Hollow Knight, if you're interested in that game. And uh, also, I am currently in the process of doing a series of podcast analysis on a video game called Planescape Torment. I'm doing that on the YouTube channel Risen and Dark. It's been great so far. We're midway into it. Um, I'd highly go check it out. It's been a really, really enlightening conversation and uh, wonderful doing that with Mike and Kaysen over there. And uh, that does it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you again next week. Until then, I want to remind you, as always, and as per usual, stay yellow.